Good morning, afternoon, or evening, wherever and whenever you find yourself. Fudge Dice Roll here, and we are back. Uh, we're back here in Iowa Plains on Farming Simulator 22. Uh, unfortunately, that farmer uh, for the cornfield, they did not want to wait on having their harvest done, and they actually contracted out a couple other farmers, uh, which is unfortunate. I was hoping to be able to pick up that corn header, uh, but it looks like it's just not in the books for us. Not this time around. Which is fine, uh, so we're going to go ahead and harvest one more round of silage uh, so we can have a nice big uh, silage uh, harvest that we will be able to go run into the livestock uh, bale supply store come this winter. I know that there's been a bunch of other farmers that haven't really been able to uh, devote their time to getting a, like... A, their, their silage, their triticale and alfalfa and all that stuff harvested up for their various livestock. And so uh, I have taken it upon myself to take some of my uh, excess reserves and get it sold to help take care of my ag community. Speaking of community, uh, it's a nice little segue here. Uh, thank you guys for those of you who have been uh, recently subscribing to the channel. I do appreciate it. I am trying to get to 1,000 subs by the end of the year, and we're almost a third of the way there. So, you know, big thanks to you guys. It means a ton to me that you guys are, uh, you know, you guys are enjoying the content, but still nearly 85% of my viewer base is not subscribed so, if you've been watching the content and you've been enjoying it, then please consider subscribing. Uh, it would mean a ton to me. And uh, if you're new here, welcome. Uh, we try to do a little bit of mix of sort of casual play plus a little bit of role play uh, and a sprinkling of education mixed in. So, if that sounds like something up your alley, consider hitting that subscribe button. Uh, and if you could, make sure you leave a like and comment uh, your your favorite tractor on the uh, on the comments section. All that stuff helps out tremendously. Uh, I've noticed that when people have been hitting the like uh, on videos, we've actually been getting more views and more subscribers. And so help me. I literally can't uh, get to a thousand without you. So. Uh, anyway, we're, there's enough of that. So uh, we have recently had the local uh, ag department come out and get soil samples for our field. And we were able to correct our uh, nitrogen and uh, and our, our pH deficiency in the field. So we should see a bump is almost as much as 20% to our harvest here on the field, which is going to be phenomenal. Now, the grass isn't as fully grown as I would like for it to be right now, but that is okay. Uh, we are still gonna get a good harvest out of this field regardless. And uh, yeah, so I'm looking forward to this. We'll be overwintering. I think uh, by the time that the winter and everything is done, when we get back, we should, uh, we should have that, uh, <laughs> we should have our, our pig barn, uh, our, our pig facility will be uh, dismantled by the time next year rolls around. And I'm not quite sure what I'm going to try to put in that area just yet. Um, honestly, might even see about having some of that uh, field, having some of that concrete and stuff broken up. That could be a little bit on the expensive side. Uh, and then maybe expand out the size of this field. I'm not sure yet. Uh, I'm not not sure what I'm going to be doing yet. So, oh, got a little too ahead of myself there, huh? There we go. Let's get that mode out. <laughs> um, but yeah. So there's so many options. There's so many working options of things to get done. Um, it, I would like to be able to expand this field a little bit more to have a larger grass field through here. I mean, heck, I could even turn that into another smaller field. I'm not sure yet. Maybe it'll become more barn storage. Maybe uh, maybe I'll expand my uh, my my cattle uh, facilities. Who knows? Who knows? Or maybe even expanding my chickens and getting uh, 
getting a bigger you know what that might even be a thing i might even see about trying to convert that building for a bigger area for chickens hmm. i've got a lot to ponder on but uh we have a lot of time over winter to get all that stuff figured out so that is what we'll be doing aside from general maintenance on vehicles as well as taking a look at what our you know what our, our plan is going to be for next year um i would definitely want to get into corn uh i want to kind of get that good corn money <laughs> so uh we might be looking into a few different things I'm not quite sure yet but we will uh, we'll get it figured out and yeah so anyway i'm gonna go ahead and shut up here i've got a uh, i've got some breakfast with me i just haven't had a chance i've been running and gunning all morning so i'm gonna sit down here uh let the uh starfire take over and just have myself a bite to eat and catch up on some emails and some phone calls and i will get back with you guys once we start getting all this uh windrowed and uh getting it all wrapped up Okay, so uh, yeah, we we got a heck of a harvest out of the field. Uh, normally, what I'll do is I'll let the uh, the field go for two months, right? So it'll be when the field says it's harvestable, I'll wait an additional month because that will actually confer, I believe, it's an additional um, uh, fifty percent yield bonus. And so normally, what I was getting out of the field was I was getting about twenty four bales. With that additional 50% bonus. Uh, well, I got 23 bales out of the field uh, without that bonus. So that additional yield that we got across the field by getting our nitrogen and our um, our pH balanced out is already going to pay dividends. Uh, just based off of what we got, we got 23 bales when normally we'd get 24 bales uh, in twice the time. So I am... Uh, I'm pretty pretty excited about that. So this is going to be a good number of bales for us to have. And hopefully everything's going to get... Well, it should be. Everything should be uh, fermented up by about January. And we will be able to run that into the uh, animal, uh, animal feed bale supply. So I'm pretty pumped, man. I am, 
I am pretty pumped about that. We're going to get all this picked up, going to get all this taken in and uh, stored over in our e-tunnel. I'm thinking what I might do, thinking what I might do is actually put a larger e-tunnel on the property. And I think what I'll do is I'll actually take that bunker silo and uh, kind of demolish that bunker silo so I could put a larger e-tunnel in and then move my stuff over to, th to that larger e-tunnel for storage. <coughs> oh, don't mind me. A little cough there. I uh, ate my lunch a little fast here in the... Uh, or my, Well, I guess you could say it's lunch. It was more of a breakfast, but uh, a late breakfast. <laughs> but I, I ate a little too quick and... Uh, Still have a bit of it, uh, breakfast burrito in the back of my throat there. All right. Nothing a good sip of water won't fit. So, yeah, uh, pretty excited. We got some, we got pretty good bales. These are 150 centimeter wrap bales, which is about as big as our pottinger can actually wrap. Uh, I have thought about maybe looking at a different bale system. Just something that I could be able to wrap larger bales with. Uh, it'd be really nice to be able to go up to 180 centimeters just to make things a little easier here on the field. Although, to be fair, sticking with this 150 centimeter bales, uh, those are going to be great just because I already sort of know the uh, uh, ratios I need for mixing TMR. Speaking of, there is another little TMR cart. Uh, I was talking with Dave. Oh, nope, never mind. It looks like it's no longer on sale. <laughs> Uh, there are a few things here. <clears throat> we do have this Massey Ferguson Ultra HD, <clears throat> but this is a square baler. And while it would be nice, uh, I would have to, you know, come back through the field and wrap bales again after square baling. But, I mean, a square baler would be pretty nice to have just because uh, it would just kind of consistently shoot them out. That's the only downside. That's a trade off that you get when you have a baler and a wrapper combo is that I'm kind of having to stop. Uh, <clears throat> every uh a couple times per row just so that i can get the bales uh wrapping and so it, it does kind of slow down my oh my flow a little bit there but i don't mind just uh you know having that uh, ability having that ability to get everything uh in one one pass on the field versus having to do multiple passes because you got to think like okay i got to come through i got to come through the field and then i've got to mow the mow the grass then i have to windrow the grass then i gotta bail wrap the grass <clears throat> and then i gotta come back through and pick it all up it's like, would I want to add another step of bailing than having to come back through after I finish bailing and wrap than having to come back through and pick everything up? It's uh, it's one of those things where you kind of got to think about it. You know, is, is it worth it? I mean, if I could make larger bales, then I'd have less bales to make. Yeah, we'll pull through here. So we have our e-tunnel right here, and what I'm thinking... I could pull this out, put a larger e-tunnel over here, and <clears throat> maybe just keep that for uh, sale storage, this smaller one over here, and just keep it loaded up uh, with bales that I'll be taking to sell and distribute uh, to the animal dealer and uh, the animal feed lot. And get these loaded up here into the e-tunnel. Be able to get every oh but he sees <laughs> oh yeah because we're getting pretty close to full on this here uh we're gonna have a lot of silage bales to run in that's uh we got 48 bales that are ready to go right now 
There are 23 bales uh, that are going to ferment. So if we take a look, I uh, took down some numbers here. Look, as far as sales go, I could be by January looking at about about 350. So if we do quick maths here, that's uh, so the bales here are. <clears throat> okay. Multiply that by <clears throat> actually oh, I did my maths wrong. <laughs> Good job there. Uh okay, we take that, we multiply it by this, and then we add it by that. Okay, and then we multiply it by that so we will say three so yeah we're looking right now at about roughly ninety thousand dollars worth of bales to sell at the end of this year uh 90 90k in bales is actually really really good that's gonna make uh that'll be really good operating costs for us <clears throat> that'll pay off that uh crumpy uh trailer uh so that would be great and then we're going to have to wait a little bit to get some other stuff in. Uh, really, right now, the big wait is going to be to try to get in the... Uh, try to get in all those soybeans, and that's going to be a hot minute on the soybeans. Uh, just because they're really not going to peak in price till about June. I'll set this here, do a little spray clean and maintenance. Uh, but yeah, I think what we could do is we could probably get rid of this bunker silo here. I mean, that's just where I've been parking the cart anyway, is just here in this bunker silo. I could probably pop that bunker silo out of here and buy and have another e-tunnel put in. <clears throat> I think we can go with one that will hold about roughly 200 plus bales. And that way we can keep that here for overstock and overflow. I mean, I could just put bales in here, but I'd rather kind of have a night, another e-tunnel uh, just to kind of keep things nice, neat, and tidy. Uh, but yeah, so that, that's that's pretty much all we have on the docket. The only other thing I need to do, go roll the field, uh, which honestly I don't even really need to do because we're not going to be able to harvest again until springtime, but I'll probably go ahead and roll the field anyway. And uh, I was talking with people down at the local ag hall, and really there's not much going on. Uh, there's a big sugar beet harvest that, you know, could be done. I could roll out there with a uh, new little harvesting uh vehicle but uh i don't know <laughs> it'd take me probably about uh the rest of it'd probably take me about a a week or so to get out there and get all that done uh maybe not even a week i right? probably two to three days to go out there and get all all that work done not quite sure yet if that's the route that i want to go or what exactly it is that i want to do uh now as far as cows go we should should be looking here at the cattle being ready to give birth here sometime soon to uh, a, an increase to the herd. So we might, I think it's definitely going to be a thing where we're going to need to start. Uh, we're going to need to start harvesting and kind of keeping some more uh, hay and, uh, and, and stuff in stock because we're already, you know, feeding these guys uh, like uh, 16... Uh, cubic meters or 16,000 liters of feed per month. Uh, and while we have a really good uh, kind of stock there, that's definitely something I'm going to have to keep in mind as we uh, expand operations with cattle. <clears throat> I'm still trying to figure out if maybe I want to try to convert this, uh, this you know, pig barn into a larger kind of setup for the... Uh, for the, the chickens and instead kind of move my chickens from from over there to here uh, once we get some conversion done. It actually wouldn't take too terribly much to uh, convert this out. But if we go ahead and take a look right here, uh, really we would just be able to kind of pull a lot of these pens out of here, a lot of these pens and these feedings, and uh, we'd be able to convert this into kind of like a larger run for the chickens. Uh, that might actually be something I think about doing. Uh, I could, technically I could raise pigs. I'm, I'm on the fence. What do you guys think?
actually I'll poll you guys. Would you guys want to see me raise pigs on the farm? Uh, which would just mean a little bit of crop diversity. I would definitely have to be planting corn, definitely having to plant a uh, root crop. Uh, because that's the thing is that pigs take so much uh, different feed. Uh, so we're going to need to have a base, which we could do corn as a base, uh, soybeans as a protein. Uh, we would need to be growing wheat anyway for helping with the chickens and then potatoes. So, I mean, that's going to give us a whole mix of different uh, different animals. And then on top of that, uh, you know, we're going to have to deal with uh, the produced slurry and manure. Uh, I'm going to have to probably bring another manure extension for this way, uh, just because that one's going to be way too far away for us to be trying to muck out to for the cattle barn. Um, uh, all right. There's a lot to think about. So if you guys would be interested in seeing pigs, let me know in the comments below. And we can kind of adjust, uh, kind of adjust fire on that. But yeah, I think uh, we got some rolling to do down here on the field. I uh, got a few more phone calls and stuff to make, and I mean, maybe we could, um, could head out that way. This would be a good little chunk of money for us. If you mean, take a look here. Yep. Fourteen actually isn't even that. Not even that far, uh, we'd be able very easily head down here and, uh, and, and do, um, you know what? I think, we'll, I think we're going to do that. I think we're going to we'll go ahead. We'll help out our neighbor down there and feel, and that should, that should be good. <clears throat> that should be good for us. So yeah, we'll head down to field 14. We'll harvest that. Uh, that'll give us a little more operational funding and we get a few more things paid off quicker because we have uh, our loan payment or that we have to make coming into uh, April. Uh, we, you know, we need to pay another 25k off of our loan, uh, off of our line of credit. And we have a few other pieces that need to be paid for yet. Uh, we still have the crumpy that needs to get paid for that we're, uh, we're leasing. To own right now actually that's the only thing that we're paying on so all right uh well you know what i'm gonna get a few things done here around the farm and then we are going to make our way down we're gonna make our way down to the, uh field 14 and we will start harvesting that i think that is uh that sounds like a plan to me Okay, we are out here getting this field finished up uh, for uh, field 14 right down away from uh, our farm here. And we have been putting in work. This thing is absolutely filthy. <laughs> this thing's absolutely filthy. But uh, we're nearly done with the field. We've got a couple more passes to go here. And we have harvested an absolute butt ton of sugar beets. It has been crazy. Uh, but, you know, the money is going to be great. Uh, we should actually be able to pay off a few things. I'm thinking kind of what I want to do with some of the money would potentially be to go ahead now and get the ag. Well, you know what? We can have them come out in the spring. We'll let the, we'll let the, we'll let the, the soil overwinter. I don't know. Part of me really wants to get field seven uh, soil analysis done. And the other part of me is just like, well, hold off for a second there. Like, you know. All right. Should be all lined up here. Let's get this. All right. Part of me really wants to get that done. Like, just so I have those numbers, just so I know. Uh, that way, if there is anything that needs to be done next year. But another part of me is saying I also need to get an anhydrous tank. And I'm going to need an anhydrous sprayer. I'm going to need something that I'm going to be able to use. The, um, the, the, the spot and spray, I believe, or the sea and spray. Um, precision 
uh, like precision fertilization for uh, running the anhydrous. I don't know. It's there's so many working parts. I know I want to do corn, but there's another couple other things bounce around in my head. Like I would not mind trying to buy uh, the field right next to field uh, field ten. Uh, right next to where we harvested all of our wheat earlier this year. I would love to be able to buy that field. There's also field uh, field 30, which is right below our grass field. And that would be great, too. Um, but that's going to run me about a little over $100,000 to do that. So I'm not sure. I'm not sure. The other thing that could be is I could uh, I could attempt to lease... I could attempt to lease the field, uh, field just to the the north of uh, of field ten. I'd have to check and see with that farmer. I know that was farmer Leroy. He's the one who had uh, the issues with his foot and then with his combine uh, earlier in the year. So that could be an option uh, for me to see if maybe he wants to lighten the number of fields that he's going to have to deal with. Um, next year so i could try leasing the field from him uh with the intention on purchasing the field after the fact and i could probably get that field planted with potatoes hmm i don't know there's there's so many moving parts so many things that i want to do if, if i'm going to do this i'm going to definitely need to diversify crops though i'm going to need to have I'm gonna need to leave myself some soybeans. If I'm gonna do pigs, I need to leave myself uh, plenty of soybeans. I'm gonna need potatoes. Uh, just, there's so much, there's so much. <laughs> All right. Head. Uh, the other thing we could do would be to save these sugar beets save whatever uh, excess sugar beets there's going to be from the crop and then not worry about potatoes I don't know alright All right. and this thing just really likes to swing got this big wide body on it that's fine though Still getting a really respectable six miles an hour on this harvest. Got a ton of sugar beets back up in here. Go ahead and get ourselves set here to offload. We should make it at least halfway down this line. I'm just so torn. I'm so torn between what to do. That's the problem. It's so many moving parts. And we're going to be going through uh, the winter months, and there's really not much going on, so I'm probably not going to have much content. There's just so many things that I want to do. We take a look at our almanac, see that uh, we're not really even going to be able to plant potatoes till come March. And then we'll be able to harvest those potatoes come August, September time frame. And then if we wanted to, we could replant well, what we could do is just run a test, right? I could plant field 10 with potatoes and then replant the field with wheat come, come the, uh, I'd say replant the field with wheat come, come the fall. And then we'll be able to harvest said wheat. But then we're not going to really be able to do anything else with that, are we? Uh, if I could plant the field in March, then I'd be able to keep rotating, planting through wheat. March, I'd be able to harvest, plant, harvest, plant, harvest, plant. I could actually plant with wheat now. I might do that. Ah, uh, so much to do. So much going on.
Look at this thing. It's an absolute beast. Don't mind me. <laughs> so, uh... Uh... Yeah, I think... I think I might do that. I think we might get the field planted with wheat now. And then we'll just kind of keep rotating wheat through that field. I think field seven, we're definitely going to get our... Uh, Field seven, we're gonna get our uh, soil analysis done, and that we're gonna plant corn there. We have plenty of soybeans left over from the field. There we go. About to say, I know you're gonna unload. Uh, we'll be able to save plenty of soy film. You know what? I think, I think we're gonna try to do pigs. We've never, I've never raised pigs before. Uh, but I think I want to make an, an exception. I want to try doing something different. I want to come out of my comfort zone a little bit. I've never really done root crops and I've never really raised pigs. So I'm thinking that that is what I want to do. Thinking that is what I want to attempt to do. And so that's what we're going to shoot for. So I need, I might need to just go ahead and purchase uh purchase another field I think I'd want to purchase the one just north of my north of where I'm going to have my wheat planted because it's right here by my farm it's going to be easily accessible uh, I can plant my potatoes there and I think what we'll do in the interim is we have uh, almost everything we're going to need to by the end of next year we could actually look at getting pigs onto the farm now i think that's what i'm going to go with i think by the end of next year we are going to try to get pigs on the farm we'll be raising the pigs i want to be able to do more animal husbandry i don't mind doing uh, like this arable you know agriculture Mo most of this is just you know going to be primarily for taking care of the animals and stuff that i have Oh, howdy, partner. Okay, he turned right around. Uh, no, I don't want to say howdy, partner. <laughs> All right, so we're here. We drop these beets off here at the sugar processing mill. We're going to get all these sugar beets refined down into sugar. And I think I'll just sell all the beets. Uh, I know that there's going to be a little bit of the crop left over kind of as a bonus for me for coming out and doing this work. And I'm just going to sell it all. Just get it all sold. Yeah, we're 92% transported. And, uh, and we will just grow potatoes. So I'm thinking I need to check that field. I need to check with the farmer, with uh, Farmer Leroy, and see what the deal is, what he has out there planted going on i don't think he has anything planted in that field i think he limed the field which is nice that'd be one less thing that we'd have to worry about we we'll also need to get the soil composition for that field oh boy all right there's a lot of moving parts but i really you know earnestly i really want to get this uh get my operation up and generating a decent profit and so sometimes yeah, you gotta lose a little bit of sleep. Sometimes you gotta crunch some numbers, and sometimes you gotta put in that sweat equity. You know what I'm saying? I I think we're definitely gonna look at getting, definitely gonna look at getting pigs onto the farm, and thinking about the logistics that's gonna come with us having to handle said animals. Um, but you know what? I guess the silver lining to that is is that we will be producing a lot more of our own uh, fresh uh, fertilizer because uh, because the pigs will be making uh, manure and slurry as well. So we can look at uh, getting that kind of figured out with the farm uh, that we're using, using natural uh, organic fertilizers to have everything running and operating on the farm. which has always been uh, a goal of mine. I always want to try to do things as naturally as possible. 
and so we'll have more than enough uh, like slurry and uh, and manure and stuff like that for our fields. Um, we might even be able to treat our some of our uh, our larger field seven and stuff when we're going to be growing corn and whatnot. We'll be able to do a mixture of uh, organic and anhydrous ammonia uh, fertilization on the field. We are going to rotate it out too. It's not always going to be uh, corn. We'll probably do corn this next year. And then soybeans the following year, and we'll just kind of rotate it that way. All right, I've got ideas. I've got things in my noodle box. <sighs> A lot of stuff to try to get done for the spring. But that's fine. That's part of the fun. That's part of the challenge, right? All right. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and get this field finished up and make some phone calls, sit down, do some uh, do some number crunching, figure out some logistics, and just overall, I've got a lot of stuff to get done between now and like March April time frame. So, I guess I will be coming back uh, around then and get you guys in the loop on what it is that we got going on, what it is that we're doing, and the direction that we'll be taking the farm in. So thank you guys very much for being here for uh, uh, for another season on the farm. This is the second season we've been operating the farm now, uh, pretty much on our own, and it is it's been exciting. And I'm glad that you guys are here with me as I uh, kind of journey through this, make my make my uh, my decisions, my mistakes, <laughs> and and here to hang out with me while uh, I grow and learn. So thank you so very much for being here. Uh, make sure to leave a like and a comment and a subscribe if you haven't already. 85% of you guys aren't subscribed and it would mean the world to me if you did as we are one third of the way to our goal by the end of this year, 2024, to have 1000 subscribers on the channel. Literally can't do it without you and greatly appreciate those who are doing it. You guys take care, and I'll catch you in the next one.